Welcome back, this is the Jack, and today we got Gunslinger Elysium Suicidal. Hopefully we can get that Lore Master Sanctum Arena. It'd be nice, you know. It'd be grand if we could make that work. It really would. I'd be surprised. <laughs> Still have no idea what that lever does. This one right over there. Yeah, over there. No clue. Says something about consequences, but I don't really know what those are. I'm thinking it means you can randomly get the Lore Master Sanctum Arena. I'm thinking. Is, uh, is, is it just unlocks it in the rotation? It doesn't necessarily guarantee it, but it unlocks it, perhaps. We'll have to maybe do another endless run, I guess. I really don't want to, but... Like, I... I got no idea, dude. I, I haven't looked it up yet. Might do one more endless run. Um, turn in everything that we can. Again, there is still that one environmental effect that we haven't seen come up yet. The weird spider legs. We have not seen that one come up yet. So maybe there's like a, 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 a zone that we haven't seen yet. I don't know really. Um, let's toss that. Buy another one. Can't really do that in. Um... Oh, wait, you still have to buy ammunition, you fool! You can't really do that in multiplayer because people will steal your gun and then sell it because they're a bunch of jerks and you hate them. But you can do it in, uh, in single player just fine. I typically don't because I'm lazy. You do get more ammunition out of it for the same money though. It's just, uh, especially in single player, it's kind of, you know, you look at it and you think, okay, wave, wave two. You still, you, you can get by with like a nine mil on wave two. You know, you don't really need anything better than a nine mil for, for this wave. You get a couple of scrakes, maybe a quarter pound. It's like whatever. It doesn't really matter. I love the. We're gonna, I'm talking about chess a lot. Okay, I'm still playing Terraria. Do we have a? Do I have a, an update for Terraria today? So let's, this is my storage room. I, I I I like my storage room. Oh, I accidentally deleted my um. I don't, think, I don't think I have anything. I haven't done anything. I've just been AFK because I accidentally deleted my stupid cell phone, so I have to like go and grind out all of the stuff for a new one. Major pain in the butt. I've got everything except for the DPS meter, so I'm just waiting on uh, Traveling Merchant. I haven't really been doing anything. I've just been AFKing in a, uh, in a bed so that time passes a little bit quicker and I can get more Traveling Merchants. Is my current strategy, but it was... Uh, and people tell me, uh, yeah, I, I was whining about having deleted my uh, my cell phone to my friends, and they were like, "Well, why don't you just favorite it?" But uh, what happened was, was I was sitting at my granite farm, and I picked up my demon conch to go down to hell to check on the the chlorophyte farm that I have. <laughs> and uh, so when I went back down there, I put the demon conch down, picked up um, my cell phone to teleport back to my bed where the uh, the granite farm was. When I got back to the granite farm, my inventory picked something up. I switched out my cell phone for whatever my, you know, character picked up automatically. Put the thing I picked up into the trash, except I never actually picked it up, and I put the cell phone into the trash instead. So even though it was favorited, you, you can still, you know, manually move it with your mouse into the trash can and it'll get deleted, so... That's what I did. Be nice if that uh, if favoriting it prevented the manual move as well. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is maybe make a mod that gives me a hotkey to uh, teleport back to spawn. Mods don't exist for 1.4, but uh, uh, some, something simple like that I could probably make myself. I, I, I imagine I could do that myself. It doesn't seem that hard. It's just a little bit of... Um, you know, maybe some assembly, like injection kind of stuff or whatever it, not not that's not super complicated um, just just have a hockey and then it just you know calls the same bit of the code that it calls when you use the um, the magic mirror normally could be done could be done it might not necessarily because because I, I I could I, I could probably get it to the point where it teleports me back to spawn. I'm not sure how confident I am 
in making a hockey that actually like plays the animation of using the magic mirror item that you have. Um, that seems a little bit more tricky to do, um, just because you have to that you have to start writing like detect what items are actually in the inventory. Which, well, that's not that complicated either. That's 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 pretty straightforward too. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe it could work, maybe it could work, I might, might look into it. Because you just have to, like, look into, like, what, what items are in the inventory, detect, you know, hey, find, find one of the magic mirrors in the inventory. Magic mirror, or cell phone, ice mirror, you know, whatever. Um, pick that, and then play the animation for using it and teleport back to, to spawn. It's a bit of a bigger project, but I think that could be done. Yeah, yeah that, that, could, that could probably get done. Um, it's, not, it's not that hard, really. Um, anyway. I'd have to I'd have to make a new world and character for it because the uh, thing is is when you're playing around with because uh, Terraria doesn't have any anti cheat protection because they don't they don't care you you can it's a single player like it's not a single player game but but it, it's not a you know if you're playing with other people I don't know it, it, it's it's a very client sided community game it's not really a sort of like. A, Anti-cheat isn't important in it, right? Like, nobody cares about cheating in Terraria, T-Edit, and, and whatever. It, you know, there's save editors on websites and stuff, you know? Like, it's, it's who cares? Cheating isn't important in, in Terraria. It's not something you have to worry about, uh, worry about because if somebody wants to, to cheat or if they want to, you know, get themselves a whole bunch of items or something, you know, like, it has journey mode in it, like, which is just cheats built in. Um, it's like, whatever, right? I mean, journey mode, I guess, does limit you from... Um, being on, uh, going, like, trading the journey mode items over to a normal world, because you can't put a normal character into journey worlds, and you can't put a journey character into a normal world. Um, so there is some degree of anti-cheat, but it's, like, the most minor of minor. Um, so anyway, the thing is, is, is with these types of games... You can pretty much do whatever you want with just like cheat engine, even right. Like you can you can edit the items, you can play animations, you can do whatever you want. There's there's no detection, there's no nothing's gonna be like oh you can't do that. That's that's an unusual action. We're gonna disconnect you now. Like no, it's just gonna be like I I guess we're doing this now, hey. So it's um it's quite easy to to build stuff like that. Um, I, I'd, I'd probably end up going in with like cheat engine or something or some kind of uh, assembly explorer or, like instruction viewer or something you know and uh, find the instructions that uh, call the animations and all that try and mess around with it and uh, do that but anyway uh, one of the the big problems when you're working with something like this is because you can just do whatever you want because there's no restrictions and no anti-cheat nothing stopping you from just opening it up and yeah doing whatever you want um, if you do it on a main character or on a main world or whatever sometimes you can end up throwing in some assembly instructions or um, kind of you know injecting your own code into the game that doesn't quite do what you thought it does you know like you find a pattern and you're kind of like oh this kind of seems like it's doing this thing and then you try and modify it a little bit to, to call your own bit of code that you've injected into some empty memory in the in the game or whatever and then uh, you know it, it ends up just being like oh yeah no this 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 actually just somehow it ends up just deleting everything in the world you know <laughs> so because there was there's nothing to stop that there's nothing to stop it from like corrupting your character or like anything of that nature right so you gotta gotta make a new world and new character and, and just be sure that you, you're not risking too too much because you, you can pretty easily end up permanently messing something up for sure 
Um, so I'd, I'd have to make like a new character, transfer over some. I'd probably just save edit, character save edit the uh, or T edit maybe a chest full of magic mirrors and cell phones and ice mirrors, and then uh, just kind of look at the instructions of the game as I kind of do a whole bunch of stuff. Find out what's causing the animations and what's causing the teleports and all that. See if I can reproduce it. Stick it into an AHK script or something like that. Maybe I can make it an executable or maybe modify the game's like binary itself. But that's 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 a little bit you know <laughs> that that's above my pay grade. An auto hockey script that uh, just like changes a few addresses in the uh, in the game you know in the, in the game's memory that's that's more my kind of thing you know I'm, I'm, I'm capable of handling that kind of a responsibility so I might I might, I might end up fiddling around that because I want a hotkey for for my my magic mirror you know like I want I want a hotkey for that I might, might even just say skip the because uh, because I, I might want to release it and then You'd want to have some kind of verification that it has that in, in the inventory, and you know, at this point, it's kind of like, hey, why don't you just turn it into like a headless uh, Terraria client? <laughs> for for what? I don't know. I've made a headless client before, though. I've made a headless client for uh, it was some like HTML game, like Dragon Quest or something. I can't remember Adventure Quest. I can't remember. There's some I, I had a headless client for that. That I made. A headless client is just a client that doesn't have like a GUI, basically. Um, so, like Killing Floor 2, a headless client would be if you couldn't see what was happening on screen, you just had a bot that ran the code necessary to make all the Zed spawn and pathfind and handle collisions and bullets and guns and all this kind of stuff, but none of the draw calls. It ends up running significantly faster because, like, the draw calls are what is really ending up using up a lot of the system resources and uh, then you just have the script kind of like take the raw data rather than looking at the screen and uh, react accordingly so I had a I had a I had a headless client that I wrote and I think like C or Visual Basic or something I can't remember um, I just implemented a web browser had it go to the page um, in, you know sign in do all of that uh, and then, uh, you know, take the data that was coming in. It was like a flash thing, so you had to, like, implement flash and then, um, handle some, like, memory stuff and, uh, which is a lot easier when you're also the program that has the memory, <laughs> right? Uh, well, it's kind of different because I, I think that Adobe, I don't know, it's been, like, a long time since I did it, but I, th I think that Adobe Flash ran separately to whatever browser you're running it in, right? Can't, I can't remember. I, I, I feel like it might have. I don't, I don't know. But I'm, I'm not sure. Anyway, a bit of memory stuff, and then you just get to start to, like, bot stuff. Now, it wasn't really a game where that was beneficial, because you could also just use Cheat Engine and Cheat in, like, powerful weapons and stuff. But look, it, it, was, it wasn't about that. It was about the, the challenge of creating something and doing something like that, you know? In more recent years, it's not a headless client, but I have made a, uh, like a script that, um, ran Bloons Tower Defense matches for BTD6, I think it was, um, and they, uh, they had some, like, really grindy stuff in it, so I, I wrote a script that monitored all of the stuff that was happening, all the money, all the, you know, tokens or whatever it is that, uh, that you had to grind out, and, um, no, uh, monitored all the stuff that, w uh, mattered, and then, uh, just kind of did everything. It was, it wasn't a clicking script, you know, it was, it's, it sent the, you know, the, the memory, like, it, it, it pushed, like, memory addresses and, and data into the actual memory of the, uh, the binary. Um. 
to make things happen. To, to start up a new match, to put a tower here, to, to do all this kind of stuff, rather than moving the mouse around, so that way I could still do stuff on my computer, uh, and it would just kind of be doing it in the background, rather than me having to, like, have it be active, and then have the auto-hockey script move my mouse around. It was just literally, like, you know, calling the, the functions or methods or whatever um, through, like, memory injection with auto-hockey. Which was much, much, much more convenient. Um, because it meant that I could just leave it in the background, which was very nice. Uh, and then I also got to have, like, sort of a... An overview with with some some data and like logging and tracking and all this kind of stuff of all the things and that was good fun that was a good project these kinds of things I don't make because I want to cheat in a game I make it because I enjoy doing that right like I, I enjoyed making it. I don't I didn't, I didn't use it much <laughs> I made it and then I, I stopped playing Bloons Tower Defense you know um same thing with RuneScape I'm I'm thinking I might get into RuneScape botting. Old school RuneScape botting, uh, because it just sounds like fun, right? Like to develop your own bot and uh, kind of see how stuff goes. Um, I wouldn't end up like my the, the my issue with with uh, RuneScape botting. Rune, RuneScape botting in particular seems like really really fun to me because it seems fairly simple, but also like a good challenge. But my issue with, with setting up uh, an old school RuneScape bot is that I don't want to actually have any impact on the economy. Like, pretty much at all. Um, I don't want to have any impact on high scores. I don't want to, I don't want to impact anybody else's experience playing the game, right? Like, I, I want to do it. I want to make the bot as, as a challenge to myself to see if that's something that I'm capable of and, and something that I could do. I'm fairly sure I could. I think it's Java, though. But I'm, I'm pretty sure I could do that. I don't like Java, which is the main reason why I'm not doing it. Um, but I, I think I could do it. Um, but I don't want I won't have any impact on, on anybody else's gameplay. Especially since botting is, is such a huge problem in, in uh, old school RuneScape. Like a huge problem. It's like a multi-million dollar industry botting in RuneScape. Oh, okay. Um, but any anyway, anyway, I uh, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I just have to figure out like what would I actually be doing? Because I want to benefit from it on my bot accounts, not on my main account. I don't play old school RuneScape anyway. Um, but I'd, I'd want to benefit from it. I'd want to have something to show for it. By the end of it, like, hey, I wrote a bot, it did this, and it accomplished this, and, you know, it was really cool. It was a fun experience the whole way through, and it was a good challenge, and it, uh, it accomplished this, you know? It got, it got me this. I don't want to actually use whatever I get from it, but I want, I want to be able to, to say at the end of it that, that I did this, and it, uh, you know, it, it had some kind of, uh, of benefit to me. I just threw the benefit away because I don't actually like cheating. But it's it's hard to think of you know what would I actually be doing because you think you think you know okay hey you could play like an Iron Man and, and uh, and set up a bot that that maxes an Iron Man without actually playing at all just just set up a bot that that handles it all but even that I feel like is going to be too much of an impact because you're you're having an impact on the high scores I mean I don't know I guess I could report myself afterwards and get deleted off the high scores. I'd probably get banned before then anyway, but even if I didn't, I could I could report it at the end and be like, hey, I bought this account. But you know, even then, you're competing for store stock. You're competing for, um, you know, a tree. You're competing for rocks when you're mining. You're competing for, you know, you're affecting other people. And, and that's not something that I like to do when I'm cheating, but making a RuneScape bot does sound like a, an enormous amount of fun. So I'm, I'm thinking I might just do it, and then just have a stupid bot that like runs from Varrock to Lumbridge or something, you know? Like just, just a, a really stupid thing just to say that I did it, you know? But I don't know. I'm thinking, but I, just, I like doing that kind of stuff, you know? Kind of like taking a game, kind of breaking it apart, and making it... Uh, 
kind of different. I did it with Cookie Clicker. I, I uh, back when Cookie Clicker was all the rage, I had one of the best like Cookie Clicker mods out there, um, which just gave a lot of like quality of life stuff, um, some testing stuff. Uh, I implemented saves in it. I had, uh, I don't think saves were used at that point. Or if they were, it was like cached, not cookies. So I, I had to, uh, or like, I think I think it was, I think it was using cookies. Um, and, and I implemented it on local storage or something. Um, anyway, it, it had a whole bunch of cool features in it. And, uh, it was, it was a really, really fun project to, to make that and kind of like integrate it into the game and, and make it kind of different, you know, and, and my own thing. That's just, that's the kind of stuff that I enjoy. I don't care to, to actually like be better than other people. I don't care to like cheat to, to, to get better, you know. Like I would never, on my main RuneScape account, I would never bot. It, I, I just, I wouldn't get any satisfaction out of that because like... They're, they're two different things. Making a bot is fun because I get to challenge myself as a programmer and then playing the game is also fun because I get to challenge myself as a gamer. But when you put them together, now I'm not challenging myself as a programmer and now I'm not challenging myself as a gamer, you know? So it, it's no longer fun. Um, so, anyway, that's going to do it for today. So thank you for watching. Remember to like the video. If you like, subscribe, see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.